Hi, it's Ed Croft uh, from Stockopedia. We're going to be talking about a research project we've done called the Profit Warning Survival Guide. We're going to be debunking a whole load of myths. We're going to be finding some great insights from our statistical study of profit warnings to learn what to really do in a profit warning and what not to do. At the end of this half hour session, I'm going to be giving you our ebook that we've just written, which collates all of the research. And if anybody's not a subscriber, I'll also give you a two week trial. So please do wait around for it. Uh, you should be not bored at all. This is going to be very exciting. And uh, we'll do a Q&A 15 minutes at the end. So please hang around. Uh, right, let's get straight on to it. First up, firstly, a little bit, I'll be talking a little bit about the project. I'll be talking about Paul Scott, um, a bit more about the research study and the ebook. Then I'm going to dive into what I call the anatomy of a profit warning. We'll be talking about a model of the average profit warning price performance before, during, and after the profit warning. We'll be talking about whether profit warnings bounce and also whether they come in threes, some common ideas about profit warnings and common phrases around them that maybe we should be uh, reconsidering. Um, well, then I'll talk about the traits of profit warning stocks to see what insights we can get into the kinds of shares that are most likely to suffer from profit warnings and also uh, which sectors are most exposed to profit warnings too. I'll also then be giving some other insights into the psychology of pro profit warnings and to try and explain some of the uh, behavior that we witness in, uh, in, in our slides. This is a very, very graphical webinar. There's a lot of charts. Um, and at the end of it, I will give you the book and the slides for you to go and peruse in your own time. Um, firstly, this is me. I'm Ed Croft, co-founder of Stockopedia. Used to be a stockbroker. Uh, I'm now, now a programmer and, a, and, and very highly motivated pro private investor. Um, we obviously have a great subscriber base at Stockopedia. Um, and this is very, very much a research driven project. Um, there's very little of the Stockopedia website in this, uh, in this uh, webinar, but I hope this will help everybody with their investing. Before we ca carry on, I want to just give this quick disclaimer. Um, once again, we, you know, we are not uh, a financial advisor. We are all um, personal or private investors at Stockopedia. Everyone does their own research. What we try and focus on is education and tools and providing the community to help everybody invest better. What we've done and what we tend to do is provide, look at the statistics of, um, his, of the history, of the historical tendency for stocks to behave in certain ways. And we provide those insights as data and tools on the website. So please remember shares can go up as well as down. Do your own research. I hope the information you receive in this uh, webinar is very useful. Um, a little bit about this project. Firstly, why study profit warnings at all and what are they? Well, generally listed shares that are on the stock exchange, they often have profit forecasts or expectations from city analysts, or Wall Street brokers, and that sets the share valuation and the price. Now, when um, bad news hits a company, the company has to announce what's often known as a profit warning, which resets expectations. You can imagine what happens to the share price. So if there's bad news and say they've lost a contract or whatever, um, they often have to sort of, uh, you know, fess up to it. And the question is, when a share price falls on such news, what should you do next? The general consensus opinion um, on a profit warning is often to buy. Let me have a little look at this Google News uh, if you go on Google News and search for profit warnings, and I just did this today, look what you find. First one, are profit warnings the perfect opportunities to buy? Questor, profit warnings can offer an opportunity for a bargain. Devro PLC's profit warning plunger buying opportunity. This is general consensus. People, it brings out that bargain hunter instinct in so many people. Um, and I think this is why it's worth studying, because I want to show you why the general consensus may be wrong. Debunk the myth that they may be buying opportunities. Um, the source of our data has been Paul Scott's excellent small cap value report. He does a, he writes on average about four days a week on UK small caps, and he's been doing it for years. He writes something like 50,000 words a month. Many of you will be very familiar with Paul. And what we've done is we've mined his archive for every situation where he's mentioned profit warnings or situations that are bad in stocks. Um, you can use these links and go and look at his archive. So for example, um, here you can see 
Every single one of these is an article of thousands of words, and he, do, he writes about 20 articles a month. He's been doing it for years. So we've mined this archive to find all the profit warnings we can. So first kudos goes very much to Paul. And I'd also like to, as we go through these slides, there's been a lot of work done by the, the whole team at Stockopedia, including interns over the summer. Um, it's been a lot of labor. Anyway, how do you spot a profit warning? There's a kind of lexicon around profit warning announcements. Um, and often companies will say in their news releases, which will go out on normally on regulatory news wires. So in the UK, they might go out on uh, RNS, which is controlled by the London Stock Exchange. Because it's official news, it has to be disseminated to the whole market at the same time. And normally you'll find they'll say something like, we're going to come out, uh, our, our profits may be below current market forecasts. That's pretty standard for a profit warning. If it's severe, they may say very significantly below market expectations. Or if it's a mild profit warning, they might say it's slightly below expectations. But even a phrase like broadly in line with expectations, can be a phrase worth watching out for because it's often followed up with a but. And sometimes you find there's one or two killer sentences in a news announcement which might show the reason for, um, for the, 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 the very nasty price action that happens after, um, after the news is released. Generally, these announcements are released before the open, but often um, they are actually released during the trading day or even after the close. There's often even a tendency for companies to bury the news right at the end of the week um, or before a you know, long weekend. And what we've had to do is figure out what the next day of the price impact would be for our study, which has actually been quite laborious because so many companies do actually release news at the end of the day during, or, or at the end of the week. Um, we are actually making all the data available, um, well, not all of it, but um, we're giving you this whole Google spreadsheet, which you can get from the link in this PDF, with all the profit warnings that we found. And you'll get links to the stock report, you've got links to uh, Paul's blog, link to the RNS, um, so you can do a bit of your own research. Please do let us know if we're missing anything or any of our data is wrong. We, we've done our best, very best job on this. But, you know, it, it, it's with, with the whole crowd being out there, it'd be great if you can help us find other profit warnings to add them to the study. There is a form at the end of the, um, at the, end of the webinar in, in the PDF, which actually takes you to a, a Google form where you can enter some information and, and help us find more profit warnings. Um, Anyway, so this study, it's a 245 profit warnings gathered between January 2013 and August 2016. It's predominantly, but not exclusively, UK small caps. Now, we do have a lot of international subscribers too. And while this is very much a UK study, it, these findings are very applicable internationally. There's been a lot of studies in the US which have validated, uh, well, we're really validating the, uh, the, the, the output of other previous studies and academic research. So a lot of these lessons are very applicable wherever you are in the world. Um, the team at Stockopedia gathered, verified, analyzed, cleaned the data, found out the date of next price impact for each price warning, and we've used our price histories and archive fundamental databases to find and glean insights, which I'm going to be showing you now. So the next section of slides is what I call the anatomy of a profit warning. And generally, we're, what I'm going to show you is the average price, price performance of a stock before, during, and after a profit warning. And I think this is quite remarkable. If there's one picture you should burn in your image, uh, burn in your memory from this entire webinar, it's this one. So the blue line here, blue area, is the price of the average profit warning um, in our study. Um, it's actually a subset because we needed to make sure there was enough price history afterwards uh, of 18 months so that we could build this model. Um, but as you can see, what happens here, we've got the trading days on the bottom axis and we've got the price performance on the vertical axis. And what happens, uh, day zero is here. So day zero is the date of the profit warning. And you can see here that the price trails off and becomes increasingly declines before the day of the profit warning, collapses on the day, and then tends to tr keep trading down, oscillating before reaching a, a low, about 250 trading days, almost exactly a year after the profit warning. Um, now the gray line here actually shows you the UK kind of broad market index, um, which gives, I know it's a straight line, but it's because profit warnings happen on different dates. So we've generally shown that the, 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 the market would have actually performed sort of slightly better on average than the average stock. Um, so one can imagine this gray area is what's left on the table by hanging on to stocks that do issue profit warnings. Um, if one had switched on the day of the profit warning into just an index tracker, one could have even done better. Um, so let's zoom in on each of these sections. First thing I'm going to zoom in on this section, um, the six months before. 
Now, as you can see, the up to six months before it starts underperforming and then rap, sorry, and then rapidly accelerates into the decline uh, at the top of the day, the day of the profit warning. Why does uh, a stock underperform so much before the profit warning? Well, it could be that it's already suffering some problems. The brokers may already know that. Some may start decreasing their estimates. It may be that there are sector issues and there are other like similar companies which are having problems, which make, people, make some investors back out of the shares. But one of the things that some academics have suggested is that there's information leakage from the company itself. So while directors are not allowed to trade before a big news announcement, it may be that other people in the company may actually know and talk to friends and information somehow leaks out of companies, which leads to people who are owners of the shares being able to sell before the event. Um, certainly, it's a very significant decline. There's a 6% underperformance over six months, which is actually relative to the market more like 7 or 8%. So very, very interesting, I think. Um, the next slide shows the price action on the day of the profit warning itself. You, now, what we've done here um, is basically build a, uh, we found actually about 60 companies, 60, 63 companies, something like that, which we had intraday data for. So the actual trading data for it in the day. And we built a model of how it behaved during the day of the profit morning. Remember, this is the average of about 60 companies. And we can see, and this was all the ones we could get our hands on. They weren't cherry picked or anything. But as you can see, what happens at the open, 8 a.m., the shares rapidly, rapidly decline, as one might expect when the news comes out. And then gradually through the day, there's very little bounce. Gradually through the day, they keep trading off. Um, in this smaller set, we found that, 20, that the average price decline on the day was about 20, 21%, um, a little bit more than the 19% in our full set. But as one can see, it doesn't look terribly pretty during the trading day. And there's very, very not that much evidence of a bounce. But of course, this is an average and averages can lie. Some companies may fall less at the beginning and end up falling more. Some may drop dramatically and then rally back. Um, so this is an average. But if we actually look, um, and I'll be looking a little bit more about whether these companies, uh, whether any companies bounce and how we can perhaps predict a bounce during the day in a minute. Um, but let's look at what happens after that day. The average stock from the day, the close on the day of the profit warning itself, so it's already fallen about, you know, you're talking about 77%, that, sorry, it's, it's, at a, it's already fallen 6% before the warning, then another 20% on the day. Um, we can see here that after that day, it keep, they, the average keeps falling, keeps falling until about 120 days later, um, which is about six months after the profit warning, there, there is a bottom in the average stock. And then there's a sort of a rally and then another even lower bottom after about 250 trading days. And remember, these are trading days, not calendar days. So about 250 trading days is about the length of a year. So this is an 18 month period after the profit warning. And it, so it doesn't stabilize in price until you know, well over a year later. Um, this was a generally a sideways market uh, in the UK or sideways to slightly rising during this entire period. So, um, and, and some previous studies in the academic research show that during bull market periods, often profit warning companies can rally a bit more quickly. Um, it, it, the market is much kinder to profit warning stocks in a bull market, which is something that Paul Scott has written about and we've quoted him in the book. Um, but I think this is quite a remarkable thing. It's interesting to notice the oscillations and we find this sort of a, a six monthly trend going on here um, of these oscillations and it perhaps could correlate with some uh, cor some additional profit warnings in uh, after the first one and they tend to come in a bit of a rhythm but we'll be showing you a little bit more about whether profit warnings do come in threes straight after this. Um, do profit warnings bounce? So in this slide what we've analysed is all those companies we have intraday during the trading day data and we've got the, the maximum drawdown on this scale and we've got the maximum gain in the, in the trading day on this scale and you can see that those stocks that do decline more have a tendency to gain bounce back a bit more. So there is this trend line which shows you that perhaps if stocks do fall 50 to 75 percent, they often have quite a good bounce during the trading day. Of course, this is a trading a bounce on a profit one is a very, 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 very high risk strategy. I'd never do it. And one has to remember that during a trading day, the the spread or the difference between the buy price and the sell price can become very, very wide. When things are uncertain and the market is scrabbling around trying to find the, val the real valuation of a stock, 
people are very, very cautious. So the price you can buy and sell at becomes very expensive. So it may be even that um, the, the majority of the kind of shares, even if they do bounce a bit, are uneconomic to trade. So and personally, I would never touch uh, an intraday trade and a profit warning, though I know a lot of people do, but I hope that's quite useful for those that do. Um, do profit warnings come in threes? Now, what we did in the study is we, we, we obviously, we needed to look at the, give a leading and a lagging one, one year period for all of the shares in our study to make, try and figure out whether some of them at the beginning had already worn before or some at the end went on to warn again. And so we took the middle 18 months to have a look at what percentage worn more than once. We found that the majority only warned once, about 64%, about you know 36% did warn more than once. Um, either two times, three times, or four times. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's a significant number that do go on to do a, another profit warning, but perhaps not as much as the common myth would suggest. Um, but uh, what, what one does find is that companies are more likely these days to sort of report more bad news all at the same time. Um, at, so if a new CEO came into a company and there were issues, he might do, a, you know, there might be a profit warning and you try and get all the bad news out of the way. Um, but, you know, even if they are trying to get all the news out of the way, as we saw in the earlier slides, it doesn't seem to um, improve the share price performance. Um, but I think this is quite, quite a useful slide for those who, who want to understand the statistics on whether they come in threes or not. And this very much correlates with other studies. Um, I like this from Robbie Burns. Uh, it's a quote. He's a, a well-known author on stocks in the UK. It's crazy to buy into a company that has just produced a profit warning, and it's crazy to hold on to one of your shares that has just issued one. It's more likely that it will issue another one, and just because its share price has gone down doesn't mean it won't be going down some more. Um, and I think if you read a comment like that in his book, you think it's anecdotal. What we've certainly done is, is prove that statistically, this kind of anecdote makes a heck of a lot of sense. Um, so some of the key insights of this section, before we look at the traits of stock, profit warning stocks, when profit warning strike, consider selling or selling short. It's often best to sell as soon as possible. Um, I would personally would only consider buying after a profit warning if at least six months have passed and preferably in a bull market. Um, and perhaps traders should only consider buying the bounce if the shares have fallen by more than 30%. But again, I would never do it. Very, very high risk. Um, here's a case study of my sale PLC, which was a, a float a few years ago. Um, and actually quite soon after the float, it issued a, a really bad profit warning. I think it floated at a 350 million market cap. It's now at about 140 million, but the profit warning wiped probably 50% off the price. Um, and you can see that underperformance before the profit warning, the collapse. And even 18 months later, it still hadn't got up to the price that it closed at on the profit warning date before starting to recover. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, you can go and, and dig into the, any of these case studies on the Stockpedia website yourself. Um, see if I can bring up my sale and you can see what's happened since. You know, even there's the profit warning. And even here, you know, quite a long time later, eight, uh, almost two years later, it's still struggling. Um, anyway, lots of case studies in the book and obviously lots in the database. Here's some recent profit warnings to watch unfold. Now, you know, we just looked and, and searched for profit warnings in the last few months. And, you know, the capital is a large cap. These are a couple of, of smaller, smaller companies. But you can see here in the charts on the right um, that they have a profit warning. Again, they trade off. And I, I promise we haven't cherry picked these. Um, they were just the first three that we found. Um, and you can see each of them has a profit warning that, and the prices keep trading off. We'll talk about why they keep trading off in due course. Um, I've set up a search here with this link, uh, which is quite useful because it actually searches Paul Scott's archive for profit warnings. And you can see how many days of the week Paul is actually reporting on a profit warning. They are all happening all the time, like literally several times a week. Um, anyway, now I'm going to talk about the traits of profit warning stocks. And this is going to use and hinge on the Stockopedia stock ranks. Stock ranks are, a, I, I won't go into much detail on this because I've done webinars about the stock ranks before, but they're going to be thought of as a, a risk factor analysis on shares. Um, we analyze using a three-pronged approach, using looking at a company's quality and its value and its momentum. And the idea behind it is that, you know, history shows that in general, value shares or cheap shares tend to beat expensive shares. Good companies tend to beat junk companies, etc. And they've performed very, very, very well over time. This is the performance of the stock rank. Um, overall quality value momentum shares have massively outperformed their, their, their opposites. So there's definitely something in this. Um, on every stock report on Stockopedia, we do have 
the quality, value, and momentum ranks all published as well as their com combined fa uh, factor. I'm sure everyone's found them. You're all probably all subscribers. Um, but they're ranked out of 100 where 100 is best. So we can see a high quality company would be ranked 82. Um, just quickly, if you, you know, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't seen, you can find the top ranking shares at the stock ranks portal, um, which is on the site under the ranks tab, which are all here. Um, and on any kind of stock, for example, if we were to look at, let's say, my sale, the one we just looked at, um, you can find the stock ranks up here. And so quality, value and momentum and the stock rank on every single stock report on the site. So we're going to be analysing uh, the distribution of, of profit warnings for each of these rankings. This is the first one, and this is the number of profit warnings versus the quality rank. And you can see this is a histogram, so the count is on the vertical axis and the quality from low quality to high quality is on the, this axis. And we can see high quality companies tend to war on profits the most. Now, the reason why that might happen is, of course, higher quality companies tend to have profits in the first place. And while it's, it's obviously a, a, a much better idea to be investing in profitable shares in the stock market, um, obviously, if you do, you will be exposed to the odd profit warning. A company that doesn't have any profits probably struggles to, to, to warn on profits because expectations are kind of low anyway. So I think it's sort of slightly self-selecting. Um, but you can see that if you're going to invest in profitable shares, you've got to expect the odd profit warning. This is a much more interesting uh, much more interesting slide. This is profit warnings versus the value rank. Cheap stocks are over here, expensive stocks are over here, moderately valued stocks here. Almost three times as many cheap stocks to expensive stocks worn on profits. The very cheapest shares, which have a rank of say 80 to 100, and you can see the value rank here on a stock report, Value. this one's value 45. Um, but the ones which are the, the, the very cheapest often do have problems. So value stocks often are undergoing certain business problems at the time. So, you know, one finds that some stocks that have problems are more likely to issue uh, profit warnings and continue to have those problems. So one thing to be aware of if you're a deep value investor. Um, and I think this is another interesting slide. It shows you the number of profit warnings versus the momentum rank. Now, for those who don't understand momentum, momentum is really the idea that uh, shares with increasing share prices tend to keep outperforming. Shares with decreasing share prices tend to underperform. And we can see here low momentum are companies that have sort of negatively trending share prices. And the interesting insight here is that a rank of between 20 and 40 on that momentum rank, which you find on the stock reports here, um, that, will, uh, that is a leading indicator of perhaps a profit warning. Um, personally, I love having uh, a good momentum, momentum exposure in my portfolio, and this kind of backs up the idea that if you focus on low momentum or, or, or if you're quite a contrarian investor and you like buying shares when they're beaten down, you might be putting yourself at more risk of profit warnings. Um, this next slide, it shows the fall on the day versus the stock rank. Um, what I've done here is put the fall on the day on the vertical axis from this black line all the way down. So 0% there and minus 50% here. And the stock rank from zero, kind of worst kind of ranked stocks, to the, the highest ranking shares over here. And what we see is a, a scatter plot with every individual stock as a blue dot. Um, and we can see that there's almost no correlation. You, there was a, while the, um, the average stock is falling down to this green line, about sort of, you know, 20% on the day, almost every stock is hit as badly. Um, there is a, a wide, wide distribution of the kind of hit that a stock takes on the day of the profit warning, but you know it, you, you almost can't be protected from it. Um, as I said, you know it's very hard when a company warns on profits; it's going to probably get hit. And just because it's a higher ranking share, it, it's still probably going to get hit just as much. And we looked at quality, value, momentum, high ranking shares for each of those, and they all have the same sort of spread. So the one key insight is on a profit warning day, you'll get a bad hit. Um, no matter how much you've sort of protected yourself, if it does happen. Um, but this slide actually is a very interesting slide. This shows the, qu the quality of the company versus its one year recovery in share price. So from the bottom, at the end of the, of the, of the profit warning day, the, at the, actually at the close once it's had its big decline, what happens over the next year? Now, I imagine if, if, if someone is, a, is holding shares in a company, they are likely to be wondering, oh crikey, what do I do? It's fallen so far. They're going to be going through these emotions of thinking this is valued wrongly or should I hold, should I sell, should I buy more? And what we've found is there is a much stronger correlation for high quality shares to actually hold up in share price or even 
um, or even actually recover. So you can see here the highest quality shares from a rank of 50 plus um, get an increasing, increasing tendency to recover in price. You can see some of the highest ranking shares have actually re do recover really, really quite well. So for me, this is one of the key insights. If a profit warning hits, the key insight is to say, if it's ranked highly, it's more likely to be suitable for a hold. But of course, you're still kind of tossing a coin because 50% of these companies do end up still declining more in price. So almost, you know, there's very few companies and actually the percentage of companies that do end up recovering significantly and even ending up back at their pre-profit warning prices are very, very, very few. It's a low odds game. Um, anyway, you can find the quality rank on the stock reports or go and search for it in the stock, in the stock ranks. In fact, I might just show, I'll show that in a minute actually. Um, here's a case study of a quality company um, called Boohoo. Lots of, um, lots of subscribers will know it. Um, and Boohoo is, uh, has been a great win for Paul Scott. What happened is it floated on a ridiculous valuation. And you can see the, the kind of pre-float action over here on the left of this chart. And it sort of basically came out with a profit warning collapse in price. Um, and then a lot of people had to start looking at it. Now, this was a high quality share. It had a quality rank of about 87 at the time. And Paul Scott looked at it and he said, there was nothing wrong at all with the figures. I checked them thoroughly. It was a rare beast, a high margin retailer, throwing off growth from international expansion with a growing cash pile, yet where market sentiment was negative due to a failure to meet very aggressive broker targets. And again there, we're seeing the whole point about you know, profit warnings happen because stocks don't meet expectations. Paul saw it as an opportunity. He's been long all through this journey. But still interestingly, it took a year for the company to, to um, claw back the losses and reach a new high. And then there were huge profits later. So there was ample time for people to still get back into that company without taking on all the worries of owning a, an ex-profit warning stock. Um, and it's well worth going and having, having a dig around in the data to have a look at that. Just what actually what I want to do, I wanted to show you one thing because, you know, if you, if you want to sort of go and look at the history, you can see here, look, this, this stock Boohoo, it actually warned back in sort of December 2014. Um, it, on this print button, you can actually click this little arrow on the right and bring up the old stock reports. Um, so I can bring one back from December 2014. And we can look at what the stock report looked like and we can see the quality was 80, quality rank was 85 before the profit warning. And I think that's quite a useful thing to do to go back and look at some of these old, old, um, old reports. So I think that's a useful insight for any Stockpedia subscriber. Um, the sectors of profit warnings. What types of stocks tend to warn on profits? Perhaps unsurprisingly, um, not that many defensive shares actually warn on profits. You find that cyclical or economically sensitive shares tend to be those more exposed to profit warnings. What I've done in this chart is I've, I've shown cyclical se sectors in red, economically sensitive sectors in orange and the defensive sectors in green. Um, there were no utilities that warned on profits in our study. Um, very few consumer defensive shares, you know, I'm talking like sort of, you know, the kind of Unilevers of the world, the kind of food, food and tobacco stocks. Healthcare stocks um, ha ha gave very few profit warnings. Um, and, but a lot of industrials, consumer cyclicals, etc., tech stocks. Um, if you want to go and sort of dig around and find, you know, at, you can go and browse the sectors on Stockopedia at the sectors page, which is home sectors. And you can dig around in, in all, the, all the kind of sectors and industry groups here. Um, one quick way I like to do it is to go on the stock rank portal. So if I'm looking for defensive shares for my portfolio, I'll go into sector, click in the sidebar here click sector and I'll start looking for example there's consumer defensives I might go in there and start having a look through some of the you know some of the more defensive sectors um, etc very very useful and if I wanted to look at say high quality defensives I would go and click se sector defensives and then I click stock rank quality and I try and find the highest quality uh, defensive consumer stocks. I could do the same for healthcare or utilities or whatever. I think that's quite a useful way of, of, of in, you know I'm always sort of telling everybody it's very well worth having defensive shares in a portfolio and I think this is a, a, a kind of a key point. Um, anyway, it's in, completely impossible to avoid profit warnings if you like buying profitable shares. Um, own defensive shares to minimize profit warnings in a portfolio, but you know, I would never just get rid of cyclicals completely because cyclicals often outperform much, much more in a, in a, in a, in a bull market and a lot of the most outperformance comes from some of those sectors that did warn the most on profits. Um, Avoid the cheapest shares, avoid underperforming shares, 
and only consider holding after a profit warning if it's a high quality share. So I think some of these are quite useful for uh, you know dealing with these situations. Um, I just before I wanted to give you the, the ebook and. Um, I will be, this is recorded, we will um, be giving the, the video tomorrow out as well as the slides. One thing I would say is, before we do, is watch your psych psychology. Why do profit warning shares decline so much after the event? Because you think the market should be efficient, right? Um, well, here's a few user comments. If anybody said these comments on the web, and I do apologize for quoting you, um, but, I, but I'm I just, I've cherry picked a few on some profit warnings we looked at, but almost every profit warning we look at, we find some comments like this. Um, these are from the Stockopedia site on, on, the, on the boards and I, often on Paul Scott's blogs. Um, so here's one of AO World, another hot glamour stock collapse there. Um, and you can see the price performance afterwards. This is a wonderful quote. AO World did not think the profit warning, I did not think the profit warning was that bad. And he's quoted the company saying, the company expects results will fall slightly below market expectations. Maybe the fall of 30% is a bit overdone. Again, we're seeing like the, the sort of the PR company choosing the words, almost misleading the investors um, that things are better than they were. And um, you can see here that, uh, that the, the share price just never recovered. Um, again here, Hargreaves Services. I think Hargreaves Services may have more prospects than suggested, which one person said. These are quotes on the day of the profit warning. And another one, HSP perhaps is a get rich slowly situation, think I'll stick with them just now, but it indeed is a very get rich slowly situation. Um, the, uh, the share price has absolutely plummeted since that profit warning. Um, and again, for Stanley Gibbons, you know, again, we've got a comment here saying it's starting to look potentially good value for a recovery. And you know, these are very, profit warnings are very dangerous scenarios to invest after. Bargain hunters should be well aware and holders should be well aware that your psychology um, is very prone to wanting to keep holding your shares. The reason is it's a battle for the mind. We're all as humans averse to taking losses. It's a well-known phenomenon called loss aversion and it's hugely expensive and it's been massively studied. And if people only took their losses quicker, they would potentially save a lot of the downside. Being successful in the stock market is as much about managing the downside and managing risk as it is about finding good uh, winners and holding on to winners. And this is obviously, this webinar is all about managing the downside. Um, the other thing is you may be, Anchor, you may be following the narrative rather than the facts, something that uh, Nicholas Ta Nassim Taleb uh, called the narrative fallacy. We are all humans, we're designed to sort of like, you know, enjoy stories, and we're creating a narrative in our mind that isn't based in reality. And, and when we have a stock, we project that the narrative should continue to the golden era that we believe the stock should end in, and ultimately it's a very expensive mistake. The third issue is price anchoring anchoring on previous prices rather than the reality. We, when we are in a stock, we get used to it trading around a certain level, say 100 pence, and when it falls to 60p, we just can't even fathom it. Um, and we know that the company is worth 100p. Um, but again, anchoring is a, is a very, very uh, difficult thing to, uh, you know, to deal with, and, and really it stops a lot of people from selling. So anyway, I've done a whole, I did a whole presentation a couple of times this year about uh, behavioral biases called Managing the Monkey, which I do recommend watching on YouTube. Um, you'll get the link later. Um, but uh, if you haven't seen it, please do go and have a look at it. Um, this is a, and an, an, it, it's very important to pre-prepare, pre-prepare a mindset for profit warnings. So the, this is a quote from James Montier, wonderful behavioral investing author um, and money manager. Um, the bottom line is that we find it very hard to predict how we will behave when placed under pressure. Do the work with a cool, rational head, well ahead of the time when you might experience the impact of emotion and then pre-commit to that course of action. Hence, when the emotion strikes, the action is already set in motion, you cannot interfere. I mean, you know, just having a plan of attack for when a profit warning happens is absolutely crucial. So I've put all the key insights on this one slide. They're also in the book. Um, it just duplicates some of the other slides I talked about, um, but they are in the ebook. So let's get you on to some of the key resources. Um, you can download the ebook at this URL. It's about 70 pages, 78 pages. Most of it is, um, uh, most of it is available for, sorry, most of them are charts, um, but you can get it in PDF, iBook format, Kindle format, all from the page, absolutely free to subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, just take a trial and go and find the book. Let me show you where it is. Obviously, this is the link, slash books, slash profit warnings. But if you're on the site, go up to the help menu and you get the drop down menu and you'll see read our books. And we just published it today. 
please forgive us any copy issues. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll find the Profit Warning Survival Guide. Click through and there it is. Um, you can download it, PDF, etc., all there, or even read it online. Um, all the insights, all the charts are in there and you'll be able to review them at your leisure. Um, please give us some feedback. It's just a, a prelim preliminary edition. I'm sure there are copy mistakes. We've been scrabbling trying to get it ready for the webinar. Um, forgive us any, any mistakes. Um, once again, I said, the other thing is, if you ever do see a profit warning, please do report it. We've put this URL together here. It's in the PDF, which we'll give you immediately. Um, but it goes to a Google form and you can just whack it in there and it will help us if we ever do come to update it. Can't promise we'll update this every year, but I hope that we do um, at some point uh, because I think there's such, uh, it'd be great to see how profit warnings behave in you know, other, other kinds of um, market environments too. Um, again, if you're not a subscriber, I know the vast majority of you are, but please do take a trial. You'll get access to all these resources. And you can check all your stocks for their rankings. Um, that's really all I wanted to go through. Um, so if you um, want to ask some questions, I will do my best to answer them. We've all decided that, um, hang on a minute, we've all, I, I hope that all the, um, let me have a little look. Um, okay, I'm going to try and answer some of these questions now. Um, I, some of you couldn't hear things to begin with, but I know you eventually could. Um, we started a little bit late. Yes, it's being recorded. Um, hang on a minute. I don't know if I've got, oh, those are the, uh, I'm looking at the answered questions. Oops. Bear with me one minute while I find some here. Okay. Um, I don't think you any of you are asking any questions. Well, if anyone's got any questions, please do ask them. Um, with any luck, I don't see many of you are. When does the stock reflect, report reflect post-profit warning information? Well, obviously, the profit warning tends to happen and it tends to hit a, hit a stock. And really, there's no new information apart from the fact the company says the expectations are not being kept. So what happens is the brokers will update the information as soon as possible. And then that goes via Thomson Reuters and then comes and funnels to Stockopedia. Generally, within a day or two, we've got the new earnings estimates information. Um, but obviously, the price impact happens immediately. And that updates all our stock ranks immediately. So, you know, but until the company reports its actual statements, normally a month or weeks later, um, you won't get any new fundamental information and obviously the market doesn't have it, have it either. Um, so that's part of the nature of the game. Um, presumably profit warnings are a short and hold opportunity based on the recovery times. Well, like I said, you know, short selling has its own risks. Uh, not everybody likes doing it. What we found is there was a, an additional 10% fall after a profit warning um, for the average stock, but obviously there's a big distribution there. And as I said, a lot of stocks, they have quite wide, some of these small caps have quite wide spreads. We do personally, I personally think it probably is a profitable uh, trade to short sell some shares. But remember, this is not, is not a bull market. Short selling anything in a bull market is madness, um, but it's certainly something somebody might be able to do at their own risk. Um, let me have a look. Any other questions, please do ask them. Right, should try to, let me have a look. Um, Due to the immediacy of charts, would you say that charts are probably more helpful as fundamental data is often out of date? Well, no, I've, I think, I hope that some of the information on the traits of stocks actually does help counter that. I think one of the most important things is looking at, um, you know, looking at the quality of a share and, uh, you know, uh, especially in what to do after a profit warning. I think if one, personally, I think just using charts is, is missing um, absolutely half of, half of the picture. It's a bit like, you know, if you drive with one eye, um, it, it, personally, I think, yes, the charts can help because it, it, you can spot underperforming shares. Certainly our rankings incorporate both technical and fundamental information. So I don't personally don't believe in just using technical analysis myself. Um, do the stock ranks get updated every 15 minutes? Um, I will be asking our CTO to, 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 to do that uh, in the next 15 minutes. No, we are actually constantly trying to figure out how to deliver intraday updated ranking data where we've got project that we're calling the real-time computes that we're working on but i can't promise when it will be delivered at the moment the stock ranks get updated once a day before the open um, our final or interim results below expectations equivalent to a profit warning absolutely uh, well no i think no what you what you also get um profit warnings are quite a uk oriented term in, 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 you know, in other countries, they might call a, 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 talk about an earnings miss. So when a, a company misses its earnings, 
actually when it reports its results. And that is indeed a, a very, very similar and analogous to a profit warning. I personally think it's very much the same psychology that people go through when they have something that hits their shares, which has got bad news. It takes, it's very slow for the information to disseminate through the market. And personally, I would treat them exactly the same as a profit warning. Um, let me have a little look for some more questions. Um, we are you know, we did focus very much on small caps. We haven't focused on large caps, but in the book you will find a lot of links to third-party academic studies, which did focus on larger caps. We found that larger caps don't fall quite as much as one study suggests that large caps fall about 14%. We do have some large caps in our study. It's not exclusively small caps, but um, it is weighted towards small caps. So you probably find that they um, that they decline. Uh, they, they still decline very much uh, similar amount, but not as much. Um, and Paul Scott actually here making a very good point. Maybe prices continue falling because institutions cannot sell in one go. They have to keep drip feeding stock into the market. And actually that is an absolutely crucial point that Paul's making. You know, the point that as a private investor, we are not clunky or slow investors. We don't have to, or, you know, or, or many of us aren't lucky enough to have portfolios so big that we have to sell over weeks or months. Most of us can sell almost immediately on a day, on the day news happens. And, where, and actually what we can do is we can get ahead of the institutional flow that's coming into the market. I think that's a very, very important point. And it's one of the reasons why private investors, I believe, can profit from momentum so well in both directions. Any consideration given to size of market cap free load? No, no, we haven't really looked at it yet. I'm sorry. Um, let me have a little look. Any more of these questions, I will try and answer afterwards. Um, uh, if you had a three year window, do you think it would be worth buying? Um, well, I think, you know, timing a profit warning is one of those key things that's. Let me see if I can find the slide. Let me go back and we can actually look at the average uh, profit warning. Um, you know, this is this is the overall picture that we see here. And what we found in the pretty sideways or gently trending up markets with a bit of volatility, even a year or 18 months later, the stocks are still bogged down. Personally, if I was going to buy after a profit warning, I would want to wait for a year. Uh, I mean, personally, I didn't buy, you know, if I was going to buy Boohoo even after a profit warning, I would like to see it starting to recover, the share price trending in the right direction, et cetera, et cetera. This is a, you know, a key point. I, I, I would, the, one of the biggest things to worry about is opportunity cost. And it's not spoken about enough. A lot of people go and bargain hunt in profit warnings and they buy right at the bottom here at the end of that first day fall. But if you do, you know, the, the, the number of shares and the percentage of shares which actually do end up going above the pre-profit warning price is only about 10% of shares. Um, there is a, a, there's a huge opportunity cost for all those that keep declining. I think the number in the book was that there is 44% of the shares which have a profit warning end up with a price more than 10%, have it falling more than 10% after a full year after the profit warning. So you're kind of looking at, if you buy in that scenario, uh, in the environment we've had, you'd have only had like a barely, a, uh, you'd have had almost a 50% chance of losing an additional 10%. So personally, I think it's very wise, put, put a profit warning share in the locker, Know what's going to happen psychologically is that, you know, a lot of owners are going to be trying to unwind their positions and getting disappointed and then consider purchasing it later once you see it start to recover. Um, I think that's quite a good insight. Um, and then onwards, um, let me have a little look. Have we looked at the outliers, e.g. companies that did recover most or all of the losses? There might be some interesting factor that's common to all of these. I mean, like I said, um, we, the only correlation that we could find um, was... This one, the fact that they, they tended to be the higher quality shares which tended to recover. Now, we might break that down. We might even do some uh, algorithms around it to find if there's any, any better insights but into to specific factors which might um, highlight which shares recover. But I don't know. You know, if you imagine that, that really it's only this set of shares, probably barely like eight of them, which actually end up going above the pre-profit warning price. Um, I think, you know, one can see that the odds of, of picking a winner and even finding a trait in common of these shares is actually quite low. So the only correlation is this general kind of trend for quality shares to, to, to come back. Um, let me have a little look. Um, do we have post price warning pro price data for each profit warning? Um, we in the in the ebook we do have um, the, the 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 actual price uh, the, the the fall on the day. 
I, I don't know, maybe we can, um, we can see if we can add any of the extra data on those dates. I'm not sure we're releasing it. Um, and anyway, look, I think, I, look, there's a lot of questions here. I'm gonna try and get back to you all after the session or one of the team will. Um, and we'll probably send you a, a little message through our new messenger to answer the question. So shoot, please do look out for it. Um, hopefully that was really interesting. I, I hope you all got a copy of the slides. Hope you got a copy of, of the book. Please do get it from the um, website. Um, and uh, look, let me just give you the slides now, actually, because that's one thing. Please do download the ebook. Um, I'm just going to send this through here to those of you that are on, that, so you've got the slides. Um, that was about 45 minutes. I think it's probably enough of everybody for everybody. Thanks a lot for listening. I will try and ensure that this is, video is rendered. It's up on on our YouTube channel within 24 hours. Um, so please do look out for it. We will send an email to get back to you guys. Thanks a lot for listening. It's been really good fun. And, uh, and, and thanks for the support. Bye.